There are many plugins to extend Burp Suite's functionality and today we'll look at the three that I use most often. Now of course we could just list them off and end the video there but I'd like to show you how to get started with them and hopefully you'll pick up some tricks to get the most out of them as probably 95% of tools that I try end up falling by the wayside. Keeper Security is a vendor that we've used for password and secrets management at TCM for quite some time. What's awesome is that they also do privileged access management and it's way more affordable than some of the big name vendors, which if you know us, you know that we're all about affordability. It was an easy yes for us when the partnership conversation happened and unlike legacy PAM solutions, Keeper is fast and easy to deploy, agentless and clientless and has no implementation fees. Plus, Keeper is FedRAMP authorized. So if you're looking for a new solution to protect your organization, check out keeper.io forward slash TCM and schedule a quick demo with their awesome team. Of course, if you have a favorite plugin or maybe one that you've built and you want to share it with us, then let us know down in the comments below. And of course, if you enjoy the video, then don't forget to like and subscribe. And let's dive in. First up, I wanted to share a relatively new one that I've been using and probably many of you haven't used it yet because it's not actually in the B App Store. And that plugin is no WAF, please. Now, if you didn't see it already, then I recommend you check out Shabam Shah's talk at NahamCon on modern WAF bypasses, and then also the plugin that he built. The TLDR for this one is that most WAFs have a size limit on requests, so if you want to bypass a lot of WAFs, we simply need to increase the size of our requests that we're sending so that it's not inspected. Let's take a look at the plugin. All right, so here we are in Burp Suite. And the first one, I think you might need to do a little bit of extra steps to install. So first up, before you can install NoWAF, please, you need to make sure if you come to your settings and just make sure that you have the Chython standalone installed. And then all you need to do is go out to the internet and find the file. So if I just come to Google quickly and search for no WAF, please. Asset notes. Here you can see the plugin is available and you just come to, to here, download the no WAF, please .py, and then come back to Web Suites. And here where you have the install tab, click add and then choose the file and install it. And as you can see, I've already got it installed and ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull up a CTF that I have already and just show you kind of how it works. So if we come to here and let's register. So I'm just going to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, because I think there are already a bunch of users already registered on here. And if we come back to here, proxy, HTTP history, let's just grab this post request and Let's say we were trying to do like an injection attack, for example, and we wanted to be able to bypass the WAF by uh, inserting lots of characters to make our request bigger. So I think we can just right click extensions, no WAF please, and insert junk data. And then we can choose how much we want to insert. So let's just go with eight kilobytes. And you can see we've got A equals and then eight kilobytes worth of zeros. And then we've still got our payload at the end. So this will bypass a lot of web application firewalls because a lot of them are configured for performance or the default configurations aren't changed. And depending on the WAF, um, you'll need different sizes, but you're free to continue your testing. So no WAF please, really simple and easy to use out of the box. And that's why I like it so much. It's actually a really, really handy plugin and a relatively new one that I've started using. So this one is, uh, I'm happy to share as my number one on the list. So next we have JSON Web Tokens. And maybe if you follow my content, you'll know that I work with JWTs or JOTs a lot. And so being able to quickly decode, manipulate and attack them is really important. And this plugin allows us to do just that. There's not really much more to explain without showing you for this one. So again, let's just take a look. 
So the next one we have is the JSON Web Tokens. And like I mentioned, I use JSON Web Tokens a lot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna log in here and click login, and then we log into the application. And then if I come back to here, you can actually see that I already have this ready to go. But if you come to extensions and then come to the App Store and search for JSON Web Tokens, you can see it's this one that I usually use. There are, of course, a few others as well. And don't ask me what the difference is. I can't really remember. I'm pretty sure I've used them all at some point, but you know, I've better things to do than remember what the same uh, titled plugins do. But as you can see, we automatically get some highlighting here. So all of these requests highlighted in blue have JSON web tokens in them. And as you can see here, we have the header and the body and the signature and we have a nice json web token panel so we can come in here very quickly and see what's going on and then obviously we can control r send to repeater come into json web tokens and then we can start to use the different attacks and start to see whether we can find a weakness. So this is definitely number two on my list. Being able to quickly analyze tokens and quickly attack them is really useful. And so yeah, JSON Web Tokens is a great plugin. Finally, I need to admit something, and that is that I'm pretty lazy when it comes to recon. I'm not that good at it and it's not really what I enjoy when it comes to attacking web applications. So Param Miner is actually a handy plugin that helps me quickly uncover endpoints so that I can move into the, at least for me, more exciting parts of testing web applications. So let's quickly analyze a React application that I've been working on and see if we can find some endpoints. All right, so for the last one, if we come over to extensions and if I scroll down, we should be able to see that I have JS Miner installed. And once again, this one's available on the B app store, so you can just go ahead and install it. And what we want to do is come over to our application and I'm just going to quickly sign up an account. And this is like a parody on a airline. But instead of taking a plane, you get to travel through time. And so it has profiles and orders and uh, some tickets that you can buy, etc., etc. But if I really want to quickly analyze this application and start to find endpoints, uh, maybe I want to start doing some manual testing without having to step through the entire application, or I have some idea of where I want to begin in my testing, or maybe I want to sanity check to see whether there's something in the front end that's not being used by the front end code, but um, the endpoint exists. So if we come to targets and we come to here, I'm just gonna right click extensions and then run JS auto mine. So here I've made it just a little bit easier to see, but you can see these issues on the right hand side. So it's found some API endpoints with post and then also we've got a JavaScript source mapper. So if we just click on the API endpoints, for example, you can see that we have slash register and that takes in the first name, last name, email and password. And then we have a login endpoint, a discount endpoint, tickets endpoint, checkout endpoints, update user endpoints. And very quickly, we can start to understand what the application does without really having to dig through every single piece of functionality. And once again, like I say, we can do a quick sanity check. So JS Miner is really powerful and it's a really useful tool. So I use it quite often alongside my manual testing. There are many more plugins to check out that can help us improve our workflow. So if you have one that you like in particular, then let us know down in the comments below so that we can all benefit from each other's experiences. And I will catch you next time.